Welcome to day 118 of our Big Cloud journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian, and we have a very special guest again today, Salil. Uh, you know him from Prosper Cloud. He's been developing so much for this platform, and he's one of the top innovators out there from a development standpoint. How's it going, Salil? It's going very good. Thank you, Ed. Thanks, Brian, for having me. I, I just want to cut in and say, I just want to cut in and say, like everybody I talk to, they say you're like the smartest guy on all of it. Oh, I know. Just so you know that. Same here. I'm just saying that, but not true. Uh, <laughs> I, and I, I, I keep on repeating this. In fact, like there's a there's a page on Prosper Cloud. There are a lot of people. Uh, technically, it's a project that I'm working on, but there are a lot of people in the background that have helped you know build it, right? From technical things to non-technical things. And there is a link on Prosper Cloud called Heroes. So if you go to prospercloud.com on the right side top, you will see this Heroes link. And that's a list of people, like about eight to 10 people uh, I try to highlight every month who've been invaluable, you know, in, in building Prosper Cloud. So, so the July Heroes are up there. Would love for you guys to check it out. But yeah, there's so many people who are helping me. Uh, to build this, it's, it's, it's incredible. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I met you in Miami and like talked to you for probably like 10 minutes. And I was like, God, that guy's so smart. And I like wish I could, I wish I had more time to talk to you, but it was like everybody was everywhere, you know? Yeah. But uh, we'll meet you in New York again and get to chat. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. So, so be, before we get into Salil and Prosper Cloud, which is a great project, and we're going to talk a lot about that, I just want, we're going to talk briefly about the news. Um, so yeah. yesterday, Diamond Hands, actually, it was late, late last night, Diamond Hands made a post on the GitHub after a lot of people provided feedback as far as what they thought of the new NFT platform that's coming out on top of BitCloud. And he, he basically let people know that he's listening and taking everybody's opinions into account. I'll briefly read what he said. Hey all, I have read through every single comment here and am discussing with the core team prior to typing up my thoughts and editing this set. Give me a day or two and I will share my thoughts and propose next steps. Thank you to all who have provided feedback and please feel free to keep it coming. It's incredibly helpful and the community is very lucky to have all of you to make sure the product launches right. So it's great to know that he's, he, he's getting the information because there's a lot of concerns. There's a few concerns over the, the ability to burn an NFT, the, tra the transferability of an NFT, if you just want to transfer it to someone, the image sizes on the post on big clouds. So, it's right now it's 15 megabytes. And I think, you know, most NFT sites allow for between 30 and hundred yeah. megabytes. So I think that's something that needs to be at least discussed or thought about. And so, so it's great to know that he is, um, him and his team are reviewing the ideas and suggestions and have a, you're gonna have a plan coming forward. Uh, Brian, do you wanna talk briefly about the price of BitPath? Yeah, I mean, it hasn't really moved much. It's just hovering over 100, I think like $100.50. Um, something I did note that over the last few days is that on blockchain, there has been a seller who's been selling like 2.5 cloud, about $250 worth, like every few minutes in spurt. So he'll go like an hour where like every two minutes he'll sell 2.5 cloud. So it looks like there's a seller that's trying to get out without influencing the price too much. That's probably a good way to do it rather than just dumping like 10,000 clout and scaring the market. Uh, but it, it started to eat into that floor. There's that bid at, a, we had like a bid of like 35, 34,000 or something at a hundred dollars over the last few weeks and it started eating into it. But then yesterday, another, as it got down to around 10,000 on the bid, another bid came in and now it's about, about 19 or 20,000. So that floor seems to be holding at least for now. Not, it's not to say that they're not the bids aren't going to pull out and it's going to drop lower, but right now it looks like a hundred is a pretty good floor. Yeah, so so Lil, let's talk a little bit about Prosper Cloud and what we've been doing. What's the latest with that? Yeah, so a couple of things, right? So yesterday uh, we released something called BioSearch, and um, you know it's it's not well known it just came out of almost nowhere right uh, i was playing with once the nft news came out once damon hand talked about the nft news uh, late sunday night early monday depending on where you are i wanted to see how many people have the have the word nft artist in their bio <clears throat> so i was playing with that and i was like maybe this is helpful for other people to check as well 
So that was the genesis of the bio search. So worked on it on Monday, got it out uh, yesterday morning. So that was the bio search. And since even yesterday, 24 hours, uh, there have been a lot of people who've come with suggestions, right, on how to improve it. So that's the plan to, you know, work on it in the next, you know, day or so. Uh, so that's one. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I don't know if you guys had a chance to play with the bio search. Any thoughts you have on that? Yeah, I, th I think it's definitely a great discoverability tool. I think that that's something that's been lacking is that we don't really have tools to find creators based on what they're interested in. And, and like you said, like Ed and I, we, we're trying to invest in some of the NFT artists to kind of get a head start. And like, that's awesome because you can just search their profiles. Because if you're an NFT artist, there's a good chance they're going to have NFT in your profile. So I think that's awesome. I think that tool's awesome. Uh, and I think it's going to go a long way to helping people find some of the newcomers on the platform as well and maybe get some engagement up so that they feel more welcomed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and one thing, right, like that, that's the feedback I've received. Right now, it's a pure text search, right? It has typo tolerance. So if you mistype something, it will, you know, autocorrect it and figure out what you're looking for. But the prioritization on it, it's pretty basic right now. It's just looking for, you know, the num most number of matches you find. And I think there are smarter ways of doing that. And that's what my, my focus is. A few suggestions that I got, and again, would love to hear your thoughts is, so, you know, do it on point price, right? People with a higher point price, with the same terms, they probably show up higher, right? Or with more number of followers, right? Uh, any thoughts on, you know, how to prioritize, how to think of prioritization on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. You go ahead. You, you have a yeah, yeah, I mean, I just can't say I really don't have any thoughts. I I'll have to give it some thought though. Brian, do you have? Yeah, I, I think that I I think like creating some sort of algorithm based on maybe coin price times spot, like not times, but add these variables: coin price, followers, mm -hmm. maybe maybe the number of posts per month or something like that or per yeah. day. I, I think like just combining a lot of stats in an algorithm that you kind of trial and error with, you would include likes on posts, diamonds even. And yeah. I, I think that would kind of bubble some of the better stuff to the top. And, and that, that's something I'm excited about is seeing a node implement some sort of search algorithm so that you can discover these creators that are doing more on the platform, but combine multiple variables in a way that seems to work, you know, like don't just go by coin price, but go by maybe, maybe a, an algorithm that you create that can include all those. Yeah. yeah. And like, like each category likes diamonds, uh, reclouts, coin price, they don't all have to hold the same weight. You know, you can kind exactly. of experiment with it to see what gives you the best results. Yeah. It almost is like, age rank right like how google ranks websites right like you could have the same terms you're looking for but there's some some sites that will rank higher versus others so i think this might be like a page rank for bitcloud so yeah, yeah that's that would be awesome out just trial and error see what you know works out so that's one yeah. thing I'm working on. Um, but, well, and, and i think like like we've been big into seo since like probably 2004 or something so like you could <laughs> see like like seo in 2004 versus now it's like so yeah. much different like it's so like everybody adjusts so as things adjust you can adjust your algorithm like google did you can be like the google of uh pick that <laughs> that's yeah that's a very very high bar i think a lot of people <laughs> are going for that uh that literally as i said right this was one afternoon of hacking uh and then trying to get something out but yeah this can this can actually meaningfully improve people's experience on BitCloud. so yeah we need to find a better way to discover discover creators on BitCloud. And so what else? I, I know you're working on some other things as well with, with Prosper Playoff. Um, I know you're probably over your head with all these ideas, but uh, like, like what's, what's coming next to Prosper Playoff? Yeah, so the one area I'm, I'm exploring right now is the whole bot spam thing, right? Like in the last week to two weeks, it's become, you know, pretty prominent on the platform. So people or bots rather are, taking certain profiles and, you know, engaging with them, uh, you know, auto like automatically, right? Like liking content, unliking content, following them, unfollowing them. And the downside is it pretty much leaves your notification useless. You see a ton of accounts uh, following, liking, unfollowing your account. So any person who actually meaningfully wanted to engage with you, put out a comment, liked your content, you just don't get to see it. Uh, so that happened with me last week and Tijan did this analysis like where, you know, top 10 accounts who were impacted with this whole bot spam, his account was there, Brutal was there, uh, Maz was there, I was there. So there's a ton of action happening on our accounts. 
uh, which I wouldn't say is, you know, welcomed in some sense, but it's, it's by the boss. So trying to figure out, you know, what is a good way to somewhat manage this? I think at, at the very, uh, you know, to perfectly manage this, a node will need to take care of it, right? A node will need to figure out what is a bot versus what's not a bot. How do you suppress some of the bot notifications? And maybe even find ways to suppress some bot actions, right? But that gets into the murky waters of censorship. So I don't think we will go as far as that or any node will go as far as that. Uh, what can be done in the meantime is just focus on the notifications and try to figure out, you know, potentially what are bot notifications or notifications generated by bots and, you know, try to minimize that, try to suppress that. Uh, so people actually see the real engagement they are getting on the platform. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I think we're going to see more and more bots come onto the platform as more and more people come on. I just yesterday I was noticing um, a bot. Actually, Izzy, if you know who she is on the platform, she's an artist. She's in a lot of the clubhouse rooms. She noticed that there's a bot out there. I think it's called Shark, like Shrek, but the E and the R switch. And mm -hmm. all these accounts send small amounts to that account. So basically, they're bot accounts that are set up to receive diamonds and receive clout from other people. And then when they get get a certain amount, they just all send it to this one account, and that one account collects it, and then probably ends up withdrawing it. Exactly right, and that's that's where you know there are challenges on the platform, and and we're in the early innings here, and we need to figure out better ways of you know doing things, and also see you know how it can be gamed. Uh, like an NFT artist or any artist on the platform, they put out great content, they put out great art. A bot copies it, just posts it again, and they get to collect the diamonds, right? Yeah. They get to collect somebody else's reward. So I think those are challenges. And, and the good news is if it's happening, that means there's action, there's activity, right? Like the worst thing is the platform is getting ignored. So it's not getting ignored for sure. But uh, I think, yeah, we will need to manage, you know, how these things play out in the long term. So creators feel they're rewarded for their work. Yeah, I mean, maybe there's a way, to, like, I, I'm not too technical from the developer, developer standpoint, but maybe there's a way to at least throttle notifications on posts that are replicated of other posts in a certain amount of time. So like, like if there's like more than two of the same exact post, yeah. maybe it doesn't even have to be exact. Maybe as long as the first half is the same, then you could throttle it or not show it in notifications. But yeah, I mean, it is tricky because you don't want to go about censoring things, but at the same time, yeah. If it's almost certainly a bot, then there's probably not an issue censoring it. Yeah. Well, also, I remember like months ago, right when BigCloud launched, they did have a throttle set on following. Like you would only follow, I think, like five at a time before you'd have to take a little break and follow oh. more people. So, I mean, that that's probably something that can kind of help keep bots back. Maybe they could do something the same for diamonds as well or, you know, yeah. likes just to kind of, you know, if you're taking a certain amount of action in a certain amount of time, you kind of get shut off for a little bit. But then again, I mean, that kind of goes towards censorship, I guess you could yeah. say. But, at this, yeah. but I don't know. I don't know if you can really call that censorship just throttling, uh, yeah. you know, like use. And again, right, like it doesn't need to be all the way towards censorship. Like a very simple fix I feel that a node or bitcloud.com should do potentially is every notification is not of equal importance to a creator, right? A like from someone, I'll, I'll enjoy seeing that like, but maybe I care more about seeing a diamond from a coin holder, right? So I think a very simple way to solve this in the, in the meantime can be prioritization and filtering, right? What if I can just filter my notifications by my coin holders because that's somewhat meaningful to me? Or, uh, you know, they could use some other way of prioritizing notifications. Maybe coin buys uh, have a higher priority. And if you haven't seen your notifications on coin buys, you get to see them first before you get to see maybe diamonds and then before you get to see likes. So there could be a little bit control passed on to people where they can filter and prioritize with the, by the way they want to do it. Yeah, or, or even yeah. the check boxes at the top. Like if you want to see notific notification for diamonds, you check that, likes, check that. And you, so then you can easily just show what you want to see. And then like, it's like, yeah, like a like, like do you really care that much about like, I think diamonds are <laughs> important so uncheck the like box um you know you know yeah. just check the box of coin buys so you can see who's bought your coin i think something like that could work exactly exactly yeah so yeah so that's an area i'm excited about uh i'm very confident right like as the platform matures all these things that we're talking about 
they will be incorporated into bitcloud.com or any other dominant node that you yeah. know that becomes relevant uh, but in the meantime i think i'm just trying to explore if there are ways that you know we can do this on prosper cloud and you know help people with notifications and it's a personal pain point right like my notifications are completely short so i want to not you know be responsive uh, and i want to you know be active on the platform so yeah probably it's a, it's a it's a feature almost that is going to be most useful to me yeah definitely um so before we close things out what what are your thoughts about nfts like do you think that uh like like what do you think the future of nfts on the cloud are general question yeah so i'm super excited about nfts right uh and i think they will fall in three categories uh overall uh so first of all i think it's the first non-speculative way of creating value on bitcloud right now there's a reason to buy coins now there's a reason of people making money the whole coin buy thing felt very zero sum this feels less zero sum this feels that you know some asset some art got created somebody wanted ownership of it they brought in money it could be fiat converted into crypto and then they got ownership of it right so it overall increases the pot uh, which i love about nfts but the future of nfts i think again very very early but i would put it in three categories number one the ones that we are most familiar with is art right it could be music it could be digital art like paintings videos so i think that will be one that should hopefully thrive uh, second i think would be tickets or access to real life events and i think that is super exciting to me right now if you if you can go hang out with an artist and this happens all the time right in political campaigns you donate x dollars and you're invited to you know a dinner with that uh, with that candidate right so all of that happens and now there's another way uh, you know a more frictionless way of doing that and maybe even reselling your ticket if you want so i think so that's the second piece you know access to real life events and then the third piece i think which is pretty much open for innovation you know how do projects like prosper cloud or other data driven projects start using nfts to create value for themselves and for their coin holders right uh, is there are there maybe insights analytics data components that can be sold off as nfts and i think it's super new i don't have a good answer <clears throat> but i think other projects will explore this so i think those are the three buckets i see in the near term you know the nfts to fall all within yeah I, i would even go and add a fourth category and i think that they could do this if they kind of merge like the nft idea with subscriptions so like you can have like a like a patreon or only fans built into it yeah. and then the the dividends from what the creator makes from those can also be distributed to the coin holder so it makes pretty much anybody can be an nft or you know like it it kind of it it it's not just limited to to art and and music and uh ticketing you know so like i think that if you bring a subscription model that kind of merges maybe you get an nft for being a subscriber and it tracks all that and then like if i just want to have subscribers that get extra content from me but i want to also share that with my coin holders yeah. then i think that's something that that could work too and then it kind of makes everybody kind of interested in nfts not just like the really talented artist and stuff you know yeah that's actually a brilliant point i didn't even think about it right it could almost be a time limited nft that you own this nft and whatever that nft gets you right access to something access to data access to platform access to content whatever it is right like the unique benefits but it's only time driven so it's like every 30 days probably and then it's it's a subscription model end of the day right it's just masked as an nft at that point and then if you want to continue getting those benefits you just you know repurchase that nft or re you repay the royalty on that nft right something like that that's a brilliant idea yeah you know, i mean i'm sure things are going to go in so many directions but i i mean yeah, and, and I, i think it's all i think it's all, all experimentation yeah like the like guy i i gave the example i made a post yesterday and i also talked about it in clubhouse room say somebody like taylor swift yeah you know i'm sure she practices a few times a week you know like whatever and every musician's going to have like a practice session maybe they want to give do that on zoom and give out maybe sell 100 tickets to their weekly or monthly practice session and it's only going to be 100 tickets and you know it's a it's for 5 years you get every practice wow. session for 5 years i mean i'm just throwing this out as an example 
and you sell them, say you sell them for a thousand dollars a ticket. And then you, but you set a coin holder royalty and a artist royalty. So yeah. others can resell that. Like maybe, maybe you're a Taylor Swift fan, but now you're not really so much into her. So you don't really want it anymore, but you can make a profit by selling it to somebody else who didn't know about the tickets when she sold them or wasn't one of the thousands you get a ticket and you make a profit. Taylor Swift gets her royalties and her coin value goes up as well. I, I, I think that, you know, there's just so many different ideas. I think there's going to be some that succeed and some that, you know, kind of fizzle out and don't work, but it's going to be yeah. interesting to see how, how NFTs work from big about. Absolutely. Right. I couldn't agree more. I think, yeah, as we were talking, it is the first way where there's a value exchange, right? There's a value exchange between either a real world thing or a digital thing for BitCloud or crypto or, you know, just regular money, right? There was never a value exchange very well defined up until now. Uh, up until now, it was purely okay. You give diamond, but that's very, you know, very small uh, yeah. amount of transfer of value or uh, buy coins. But then what do you get by buying coins? It wasn't very clear. I think NFT changes the game there. Final question. Do you guys have any plans to do any NFT type project with Prosper Cloud? I, I don't know. That's the honest answer. I think I'm just still waiting on how this thing plays out. Uh, I, I seriously believe. Uh, so the mission of Prosper Cloud is to improve, you know, creator commerce on BitCloud. So NFTs absolutely fall in that creator commerce space. What would it be? I'm not sure. But yeah, definitely, right? NFTs by itself just increases the whole the whole GDP, the commerce of BitCloud. And, you know, that's one of the, or not one of the, that's the mission of Prosper Cloud. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks, Salil. And uh, I love Prosper Cloud. I'm going to continue using it. And we will see you in New York in a couple of weeks for the right. meetup over there. Cannot wait to see you guys. All right. Thanks again. And we will be at everybody else tomorrow.